Hello, welcome to Live Bigger, Love Better. I'm Bill. And I'm Sandra. You know, Sandra, we've shared a lot of different types of experiences with our viewers and listeners, but we've never shared anything quite like this one. Tell us what happened on our Christmas travels. We go to see our children come here first, as we've probably told you before, and then um, we usually go, we always go to Columbia to see Columbia, South Carolina. Carolina to see one daughter and, and grandchildren. Then Christmas morning, we go travel to Savannah and see the other. A lot of driving, but we said it's worth it because they want to see us. Well, and we want to see them, too. Right. This started when they were little, and, you know, Santa Claus was still coming, and so we wanted to be part of the excitement. But there is a favorite uh, motel in Columbia, South Carolina, that we always stay in, I guess, what, 10 years, 12? And we've had great experiences, we've always. Had, always, always. Always, and we feel like we're part of the family, and they know us, and uh, they look to see who's registered and see if it's if we're coming. Then, well, we had a kind of a different night, Christmas Eve night. Yes, we had been over to our daughter's house. We came back. We watched a football game on television. I took my turn in the bathroom, Sandra took hers, and that's where the story takes a different twist. Well, the thing is, we went back to the hotel so we could kind of relax and chill out because there were so many ch teenagers and people over at our daughter's house. So we said, well, it was great, but we'll see you in the morning for breakfast. And so, as Bill just said, he took his turn in the bathroom after we had watched the game. And so it was my turn to go brush my teeth. And um, so I did and didn't do a thing different to the door. I just walked in, shut the door, picked up my toothbrush, toothpaste, brushed my teeth. But the funny, the weird thing was I couldn't get out. Yes, all of a sudden I hear, Bill, I'm locked in here. I said, you're what? I said, Bill, come help me. Get me out. And um, he tried. I said, try. He tried from the outside. And uh, we both were moving locks all over the place, the handle. Yeah, and there was no phone in the bathroom, as some hotels have. And, of course, I had, didn't have my cell phone. And we had the do not disturb sign out. We're telling you some things do not do unless you want to be on a Chevy Shave family Christmas vacation. It turned into that rather rapidly because by now it's, uh, she was locked in at 1130, maybe quarter of 12. I call the front desk. One man comes up and he says, wait, I've got to call the night manager who just left. And he's told me later he was, had just walked out the door and he turned around and came back. So he worked on it and he said, here, let me slide a credit card under there for you. <clears throat> I got that. Thinking you could pry the lock with that. Right. And so I said, well, I've done it before, so do it. No, it, we didn't, it didn't work. So I said, but if I had a Phillips screwdriver, I could probably take the lock off. But, you know, the Phillips screwdriver is about... That. And the space under that door is very so tiny. I took the handle off the screwdriver and just slid the screwdriver under there. And then I tried it and I said, I cannot do it without the handle. So by this time, we work and we work and we work. And it's about uh, 1230 by then after one hour. So what's the next step? Well... I just decided, you know, I wasn't really upset, and I just got all the clean towels and put them down, and I did yoga exercise in there for about an hour and did my yoga brief. Meanwhile, other help came in. He called other help. His father. His father, in fact, yeah, who knew a lot about locks. So his father tried, I don't know, Bill, how much, but a long, a long time. It took a good while, and finally, the father, she couldn't see it, <laughs> But he told her to stand back. Well, before that, the other, the night manager said, I just have to ask you something, talking to you. Oh, yes. And he said, is this a domestic um, situation? Domestic dispute. And he was grinning as he said <laughs> he it. He knew us for years. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, if it had been a domestic dispute, I would have left her in there. I, I wouldn't have called. But anyway, 
rescue comes to to us in the form of this man's father who well he had a what was it it looked like a machete after uh, it him. looked like a fireman's pickaxe is what it looked like so he hollered at me stand back we're coming in <laughs> By now, it's like a Laurel and Hardy old-timey deal. (laughs) I jumped in the tub. There was not a lot of places to go in the bathroom. And here comes the knob off and then the door. (laughs) So they um, got me out. They uh, said we could move to another room. I don't believe the door came off, just the handle. They got the handle. That's right. That's right. And they said, We'll put you in another room. And we said, not at this hour, no. So it was nearly 2 o'clock by the time we got to sleep. And again, the hotel treated us wonderfully. They gave us that night free. And they told Bill, said, you know, we have a big hole in the, where the knob was. And they told Bill, no peeking now. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> by now, we all needed some humor. And some of the, this is funny, and it turned out okay for us. But but there is a serious point and, here. And one reason we're we're telling people this, um, since every hotel room bathroom does not have a phone now, some do and some don't. Um, we've decided that ever who goes in there and shuts the door will have a cell phone. Yes, because as Sandra said earlier. You've put a do not disturb sign on the door. It's midnight. What if nobody is staying on either side of you who could hear you? And the next day, the maid won't See, bother they, the room. No, they, they they won't because they'll think we're sleeping in, and they won't do it. So you could be there for 12 hours or more. Right. Well, the thing is, it was okay because you were outside the bathroom, but... And it was not a domestic dispute. No. And I have tra- traveled by myself uh, when my mother was still living in Mississippi, and I would stay at hotels along the way. So it was just me, and I kept thinking, what if it were just me in the hotel room? That cell phone is going to be glued to you from now on. It is. So we're hoping that from our mistake... You will learn something and also kind of get a chuckle. (laughs) Oh, yes. And the next time we stayed at the hotel, a few weeks later, (laughs) we saw the manager and we saw the assistant who had helped us out. And we all had a good chuckle about it. And I've written them a thank you note and they've responded. So, as Shakespeare said, all's well that ends well. Well, I asked the night manager, I said... uh, what happened? And he was trying to tell me what happened. He said, but I'm going to tell you, I was, my dad had me go over to his house at one thirty, and I was there to 4.30 and he was explaining locks to me. I don't think that hotel will have any more trouble with its locks. Well, thanks for joining us. We invite you to visit our blog, Live Bigger, Love Better. And again, we hope you have safe, happy, and uncomplicated travels from Live Bigger, Love Better. This is Bill. And I'm Sandra.